Okay, so welcome to this fourth video on strokes and excitotoxicity. So, so far what we've seen is that when, um, when um, uh, oxygen supply goes down, neurons become hypoxic, that causes them to release glutamate, and glutamate is now going to activate other neurons. So, it's going to bind to AMPA receptors and NMDA receptors. It's going to cause both to open, but at normal resting membrane potential across the uh, cell membrane, uh, the NMDA receptor is going to be blocked by a magnesium ion trying to come through it. Uh, however, uh, the AMPA receptor is going to conduct a net positive charge into the um, intracellular uh, compartment, and that's going to cause depolarization of the cell membrane. So, if we plot a graph, uh, let's have here, let's plot a graph, so I'll bring this over here, so let's plot a graph of voltage, again, uh, voltage across from the extracellular to the intracellular compartment, um, uh, against time, then initially what it's going to start off with is at minus 65 millivolts, but as you bring in positive charge, that's going to depolarize the membrane. Okay, so it's going to go something like this. And basically, if an absolutely huge amount of glutamate is being released onto this neuron, then you're going to get absolutely loads of AMPA receptors being activated. So you're going to get a, a large depolarizing current into the cell. So you're probably going to get over threshold potential, therefore. And what that will cause when you hit, let's say, negative 40 millivolts here, what that will cause is the voltage-gated sodium channels to open. So let's draw them over here. So here's our voltage-gated sodium channel. Okay, uh, so uh, what happens is these voltage-gated sodium channels, which have the threshold potential of negative 40 millivolts, when the electrical potential difference across the membrane gets to negative 40 millivolts, those are going to change conformation, and they're going to open, and they are going to conduct sodium into the cell, basically. And... Um, and that's going to cause a large depolarization of the cell. So the cell, the electrical potential difference across this cell membrane is going to hugely depolarize. It's going to depolarize up to potentially plus 40 millivolts. Now, <laughs> this magnesium ion that was sitting blocking this NMDA receptor isn't going to like that. The, it was trying to get into the intracellular compartment because the intracellular compartment was had an electrical potential uh, which was 65 millivolts lower than the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment. Now, the intracellular compartment has got an electrical potential 40 millivolts higher than the extracellular compartment. That magnesium ion is going to get scoot out of that uh, NMDA receptor, so it's going to come out, basically. Um, Where's that blue pen? So it's going to come out now. And that is going to mean that the NMDA receptor can now conduct. So the NMDA receptor is going to be open and free to conduct. And what does the NMDA receptor actually conduct? Well, it's different to the AMPA receptor. The AMPA receptor is selective for monovalent cations. It can, can, it can if you absolutely force it, conduct calcium ions in vitro at least, uh, but, um, um, but it doesn't really conduct calcium ions in vivo. Um, the NMDA receptor does conduct calcium ions in vivo. It can conduct monovalent cations as well, but it likes to conduct calcium as well, uh, which makes it very different from the AMPA. So basically the important thing that the NMDA receptor is going to do is it's going to let calcium come into this neuron. And basically now you're going to get even more calcium into this neuron. If this, cal if this neuron didn't have too much calcium already uh, because of the ATP crisis that it's got on, um, uh, because obviously this neuron that's neighboring the other neuron is um, going to have the same, uh, is potentially going to have the same crisis. It might not have the same crisis because, you know, neurons can stretch their axons far away from the initial uh, ischemic place. But the point is, it's going to raise calcium in this intracellular compartment. Now, if calcium goes up, uh, then what has been found is um, that it, in cerebellar granule cells, what it can do is it can well, this has been specifically found, I should say. This has been specifically identified, this pathway, in cerebellar granule cells, but it's fought, 
It is speculated that it occurs elsewhere, but I should mention that as a um, experimental side. This has been found in cerebellar granule cells, this pathway, but we suspect it may uh, contribute elsewhere. Basically, how does calcium lead to damage in these cells? Well, basically, it leads to a positive feedback. It's entrance of too much calcium leads to the breakdown of calcium homeostasis and even more calcium coming into the cell. So if you get too much calcium coming into the cell, which you will do because you're releasing so much glutamate that these NMDA receptors are just going to be open continuously now. The cell membrane is going to be continuously depolarized and these NMDA receptors are just going to continue conducting in calcium. If this calcium gets too high, what it starts activating is a protein known as calpain. Okay, so a protein called calpain is going to be activated. And basically what calpain does is it destroys the sodium uh, calcium exchangers. And it's specifically been identified to destroy the sodium calcium exchanger free. So remember the sodium calcium exchangers bring free sodiums in in exchange for the removal, the extrusion of a single calcium. So what's going to basically happen is that calpain is going to go over here and it's going to inhibit this sodium calcium exchanger free. So it's going to break it down and stop it from working. So I'm just going to write this uh, channel's name, uh, well, this um, pump's name out. This is the sodium, so the N is for sodium, it's for natrium or whatever. Um, uh, so the periodic table symbol for sodium. Sodium calcium uh, exchanger, and X is obviously for exchanger. Exchanger free. Okay, right. So calpain, this protein over here, is going to destroy the um, sodium uh, calcium exchanger free. And that is going to mean that calcium cannot be extruded as well. So by too high levels of calcium, uh, existing inside the cell, you activate this protein known as calpain, and calpain then leads to a positive feedback loop where it destroys this sodium calcium exchanger free and then stops you from extruding calcium. So it's going to lead to calcium levels going even higher, and basically, those high calcium levels. Uh, you, you destroy calcium homeostasis completely, basically, and calcium just continues to come in and in and in and into the neuron, and that then leads to either the cell committing apoptosis, it will either commit suicide, or it will actually just kill the cell. It will cause necrosis, which is basically where the cell um, has lost so much control that it's just dying, basically. It really is death. So apoptosis is sort of like um, it's a cell saying, okay, well, I need to shut down for the benefit of the um, larger organism. Whereas necrosis is just basically a cell has lost control, all control, and is just dying. All biochemical pathways are collapsing. Um, so uh, too high calcium levels. So this is going to cause calcium to go completely out of control, and that leads to apoptosis or necrosis. It causes neuron death, basically. Okay, uh, so this pathway of calcium activating calpain, which then makes the whole situation worse, has been identified in cerebellar granule cells. And uh, there is a protein that is known to inhibit calpain, uh, an endogenous protein that inhibits calpain, called calpastatin. And it is being looked into at the moment whether calpastatin could be helpful to give to people who have just suffered a stroke to try and reduce the amount of neuronal death, the amount of excitotoxicity that they suffer. So calpastatin is the name of that endogenous protein. And there's a lot of research going into whether um, calpastatin would be a useful, um, a useful drug to use. Okay, so that is how uh, calcium signaling can go totally out of control in uh, strokes and lead to excitotoxicity.